for its work for the advancement and benefit of its people, so that peace and happiness, unity and justice may be established among us all. Amen. 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 Manningham City Council acknowledges the Wurundjeri people as, as the traditional custodians of the land we now know as Manningham. We pay our respects to elders, Wurundjeri elders past and present and value the ongoing contribution to the cultural heritage of Manningham. Council would also like to acknowledge the contribution made to Manningham over the years by people of diverse backgrounds and cultures. I welcome all members of the public here tonight to this council meeting who have come along to observe proceedings. I would like to advise those present <coughs> that tonight's meeting is being audio and video recorded. All care will be taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the gallery, it is assumed that your consent is given in the event that your voice and or image are broadcast by council. All council meetings are governed by a meeting procedure local law. I will introduce each item of business as listed on the agenda by calling it by number and by reading the title. I will then call for a mover and seconder of a motion on the item before opening any debate. Only councillors are able to join the debate on an item. Councillors may adopt the officer's recommendation in the report or propose amendments and supplementary motions. I would also like to draw your attention to item seven on tonight's agenda, public question time, which provides people with an opportunity to ask questions of the Council. Questions must be registered prior to commen the commencement of the meeting to be asked. If we do not have the information at hand to provide a meaningful response, the question may be taken on notice and a response, response provided in writing. I would also stress that I will deal with a maximum of two questions per person and two questions on any one issue. If you have more than two questions, please submit these additional questions in writing to Council through the normal channels. Item two, apologies and request for leave of absence. There are no apologies. Item three, prior notification of conflict of interest. I would like to advise that I've received a written disclosure of conflict of interest for tonight's meeting from Councillor Paula Piccinini for item 9.1 concerning application for review P1938-2019 of planning permit application PLN180598 at 21 Glendale Avenue, Templestowe, amended plans for VCAT. That being interest being an indirect interest due to close association. Are there any other notifications of conflict of interest from councillors? Thank you, there being none. Item four, confirmation of minutes. Do I have a motion, a mover? Councillor Kleiner. That the minutes of the ordinary meeting of council held on the 28th of January 2020 and the special meeting of council held on the 11th of February 2020 be confirmed. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Conlon. Councillor Conlon. I'll put the motion. Those four? Against? That is carried. Item five, presentations. Item 5.1. Acknowledgement of Lee Harrison, Director of City Services. Councillors, on your behalf, I would like to formally acknowledge Lee Harrison. Um, Lee Harrison, on his 10 years of dedicated service to the citizens and the city of Manningham in the role of Director of City Services. Lee commenced with us in 2009 and has been instrumental in driving our Capital Works Program improving our asset management strategy and systems, establishing our municipal emergency management practices and guided our transport advocacy and maintenance of our open space and road network. <coughs> That's quite an impressive collection of sentences, ladies and gentlemen. He's been, he has overseen quite an extraordinary array of development in our city. Most of the significant communi community buildings in our city have been established on his watch. Mullum Mullum Stadium, MC Square, major redevelopments of Aquarina, the Warrandyte Community Centre, the Sheehan Roads Basketball Stadium, the Ted Ajani Centre, and that's just to name the significant ones. There are many, many more. Major achievements include completion of the Mullum Mullum Trail, 
a very important one being the award-winning Bolan Bolan Integrated Water Management System, a unique, complex project with multiple authorities. A new waste bin program, new waste collection contracts, energy efficient LED lights, new footpaths across the city, new pedestrian bridge over the Mullum Mullum Creek, bundled green waste service, guided our green fleet to so that we now have 18 hybrid car, cars in the fleet. Filling of the former quarry. Councillors, there is an extremely long list of achievements. I could spend hours listing them. And it's clearly not something that's done by an individual. It's done by a team. But it's a team that's been led by Lee for a decade. And the team achieved those things because of the significant contribution of its leader. So um, we, I'm, I'm speaking to recognise those achievements. They've been recognised in many ways. We've had many awards under his stewardship. We've been ranked the number one council across metropolitan Melbourne for diverting waste from landfill. That's a multi-year effort to deliver that outcome for our city. Best practice standards from the State Emergency Service in their audit of our updated management plan, emergency management plan. A huge number of strategies and policies implemented. Drainage strategy, bicycle strategy, mode shift plan for Doncaster Hill, active for life recreation. The list goes on. Significant advocacy on behalf of Doncaster Rail for our city. Lee, you've had an incredible 10 years with our city. I'd like to thank you on behalf of the council laws and the city for what you've contributed and wish you well in what you do next. Very well. Yeah. Please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, it's a great opportunity here to uh, get up and speak uh, about the great work over many, many years that Lee has put in here. Um, to Lee, I've enjoyed, on a personal level, I've enjoyed your uh, great dry wit, your humour, but most of all, I have enjoyed as a councillor your advice and uh, chats with me about different issues and uh, the ability to explain things to me and for me to get a better understanding. We mightn't have agreed every time, however, I really do appreciate the great advice that you have given me over the years since your arrival here. Indeed, um, Things weren't bad before you got here, but I, from the time that you got here, there were a number of issues that were outlying in our community uh, with infrastructure and things that were going on. And uh, over, over the time, they have gone down uh, somewhat in number. And so that's to the work <coughs> that you have put in um, over, the, over the years being here. Uh, you probably are the longest serving uh, executive member of council here at the moment and therefore we're going to really, as a council and a community, lose uh, that experience of, on the knowledge of the 10 years that you've uh, got here uh, just to advise your colleagues and to advise council on and that will be sorely missed. Um, I'm sure that... Uh, not coming here each day isn't going to be too much of a problem. Uh, but I'm sure you will in many ways miss, miss it and you'll probably miss the Tuesday nights uh, more than anything else. But uh, listen, Lee, on behalf of uh, me and I suppose I'm speaking on behalf of the community, thank you very much for that wonderful work that you have done over the years. You've done it with... Uh, a great level of, of restraint and poise and I admire the way in which you sit down at meetings and listen to things and uh, things you might be agreeing with are said and you are just so beautifully patient and you sit there and listen to it and then come out with a very considered statement later on. That's a skill that uh, I wish I had but it's a skill that is endearing uh, to you and to the ability to do such a job. So um, 
Thank you very much and all the best for the future. It is sad to see you go. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Councillor Haynes. Thank you. Well, I just want to reiterate what I've already heard and I'm certain that um, echo from the other councillors as well that have worked with them. Um, with Lee. Now, um, I've enjoyed our discussions and disagreements. I, you know, I've got a friend that says a good fight's always worthwhile, and we've definitely had a few of those. And um, I will miss some of those things because you are very straight, like I am, and I really did enjoy those talks. Um, so I will miss it. Two of the things that I'll miss mostly is the fact that you, as you drove around, your um, ability to notice what's going on in the community and to stop the, um, to just make certain that the vandalism, the graffiti and the dump rubbish were mentioned straight away. And that was part of the things that you constantly did. And you've helped keep this city clean. And as I do less crime is less crime, I'm really grateful that I've had leadership that did that. And also your volunteer work in other things with your family. And I won't mention all the rest, but thank you. Thank you for being part of my eight years. Thank you, Councillor Holmes. Councillor Kleiner. Um, thank you, Mr Harrison. Uh, it's been a wonderful uh, eight years. Um, I have great respect for you and um, thank you for being um, a wonderful support um, to myself as a councillor. Uh, in the role of council, it's um, you serve the community, but... Um, you need the support of your organisation to give you um, an understanding uh, of, of things that are before us. Um, and you've always done that. You're very measured in your approach. You've always been very professional. And um, I've, I've really been um, very appreciative of your honesty um, and your frankness with us as councillors and putting us back in our spot when we don't understand the technical side of things. And, and um, we ask a uh, hundred questions to uh, help us formulate um, the decisions that we make ultimately at this council. And largely, I thank you that um, we are, a, 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 I believe, a high functioning council. Um, and as a, as a council group, um, that can only work when you've got the support of, of an organisation and, and commitment of directors that want to see success and, and good decision making at the table. So you've very much been a part of that. That is acknowledged, um, greatly appreciative. And I, I love that sense of um, though you might be retiring and entering a, a new chapter, uh, your legacy here, um, many, as the Mayor has just said, um, goes on and, and you should be very proud of your career. And I think it's wonderful to end your career this way. Um, with uh, a, a council that um, thanks you, as you're hearing from my fellow councillors and, and the others that will speak, um, our gratitude to you. Um, it's, it's much appreciated. We wish you all the best for you and your wife and your, your grandchildren. Uh, enjoy that next chapter. And um, remember uh, that no matter what, there'll be for months on end where there will be comments um, made forever saying, oh, that's a Lee, or, uh, you know, the, the little marks that you make. So um, be proud of what you've achieved and, and the positive mark that you've, you've left on us um, professionally to help us um, do our jobs, you know, and, and we don't take this role lightly. So thank you for all that you've done. That's um, not to be underestimated. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Chen. I just want to cry and I just don't know what to say because praising someone is really not my strength. And I can be easily critical, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I, I just feel that I have to stand up to say something to you. As a first and counselor, a lot of things I don't really understand. And um, your, your area covered a lot of grassroots Elements. I mean that, for example, the broke, the the footpath which is not up to standard. The brake, uh, it breaks and uh, it's not smooth, and the graffiti and uh, also the lid is broken. Then when 
or every, I, I, I'm pretty sure that every, every Monday you will receive emails from me, particularly regarding Rofile Park. <laughs> And uh, just very tiny little things. There are so many things I always brought. To, uh, I always bring it to you. Sometimes I feel embarrassed because just to me, this very tiny little things. But to the community, there are grassroots things that matters to the community a lot. And you're just very patient to accept it, and responded in uh, responded all my requests in a tiny manner. Whenever I write the emails to you, I would expect that we responded in one or two days, maximum. <laughs> so I think that that is really, really great. And especially, I'm, I'm not always that patient. <laughs> so I always just ask things to be done well, if not soon as well. It would be better to just as soon as possible, or if not immediately. But what can I say? And I admire you with your integrity, your trustworthy, and your knowledge, and especially your brave to say no with reasons to counselors, which is really a, a, a really great character for me to admire. And um, I'm glad, I don't know where you are going to, probably to, uh, not to other organizations, otherwise I will grin with <coughs> envy. And uh, if you are retired, and I hope you all the best, and uh, I think that the community will remember you, and I always say that it's not me, it's the officers who do the things properly to respond to their concerns. So all the best, and do come back to visit us from time to time, and as a have a drink or whatever, or a cup of coffee. <laughs> As a first term counselor, I want to thank you so much and being patient with me for asking so many questions that to you probably not professional at all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Zephropoulos. They say that the most difficult speech in a situation like this is to come last or well, second last. I think so. Oh, there's two more. Three. I think there are more. Well, three. <laughs> ah, well, well, quite a few spoken already. Uh, so it makes it very difficult uh, um, if uh, one takes care not to repeat things. But repeating things about you, Lee, is not a bad thing. Um, I also came in, uh, like Councillor Tsen, uh, uh, three years ago, and uh, the expectation I found from the community was that I should be able to understand all aspects of council, be an engineer, a town planner, a financial guru, and all the rest. Now, you made that job of mine very easy because you are one of the engineers that knows how to simplify things, how to express things in a way that an ordinary person can understand. So whenever I approached you trying to understand an issue, I found comfort in the way you explained it to me. Uh, I've spoken about your achievements uh, and the best way to see if someone has really done well is to look at not just uh, one incident, You've had 10 years to demonstrate what a great achievement you have made for this city. This city, compared with 10 years ago, is very, very different. We have built an infrastructure, thanks to your leadership, that is uh, um, possibly amongst the best that we see in local government. Thank you for that. And, uh, I'm not going to say that you're great you, or whatever because you're obviously not looking for a reference. You are retiring. And, and therefore, all I can say is good luck in your retirement. You deserve to have uh, the best possible retirement given your achievements in this council. We will always remember uh, your contribution, both as councillors but also as the community. 
Thank you, Councillor. Okay, Can so Councillor thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll just be like you, Lee. I'll just be short and concise. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much for the last 10 years of professionalism, hard work, dedication to our Council. Um, and uh, we'll, you'll be sorely missed and good luck in your retirement. We wish you all the best. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Conlon. Well, I'm uh, one of these newbies, Lee, and I have uh, I appreciate the first engineer I met here was Lee, and I'm an engineer, so I think we have a lot in common. And what I love about Lee is he's calm, he's um, extremely knowledgeable about everything, and quite unbelievable. I don't know how you fit it all in your head about every single thing that you uh, look after, but, but uh, you, you seem to know every detail of every decision we've made in the last 10 years or even further, or whatever other, you, you, you're great at relaying, relating stuff back to um, your previous experience prior to Manningham as well. And, uh, and that's been extremely uh, useful for us. Um, you're extremely uh, practical in your advice as well. And I remember, you know, you gave me a hint about where to buy my paint for my diet driveway at the Christmas dinner, because Lee just knows everything about everything. Um, but, um, but I guess what I've appreciated mostly is the fearless advice and, you know, you, you're not, you'd never hold back from telling us what you think and, um, and that's been uh, really useful. So uh, thank you for your service and I hope you enjoy your retirement and your new car. Oh, <laughs> okay. That wasn't Manningham, not buying, just to clarify, Manningham aren't <laughs> buying that car, for Lee. <laughs> thank you, Councillor. Okay, Councillor I, can't, I can't not say anything now, it's from the last one, Lee. But it wouldn't look very good, would it, Lee? <laughs> no, I've got to thank you too, Lee. And I'm sorry I can't turn around and look at you because no one will hear me. Um, but um, I've been here the same length of time as uh, Michelle Kleinert, Councillor Kleinert and um, McLeish. Um, so it's eight years. And the first major um, time I had to have heavy discussions with you, Lee, was Melbourne Hill Road. And guess what's on tonight's agenda? <laughs> Have you timed that? <laughs> it's been a ten year journey, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, you really are stepping out. <laughs> but um, look, I thank you for your sense of humour and um, you've had to have a good sense of humour working with some of us here, I believe, and um, vice versa. <laughs> Um, so, of course, I, I just thank you for all your years of contribution to us here at Council. And I won't double up what everyone else has said. So, um, from me, thank you and good luck. Thank you, Councillor. Mr CEO. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Lee, I mean, we've, we're already um, um, acknowledging you uh, organisationally in a number of different ways. Um, and in a way that uh, that you feel comfortable with, but um, I know this is taking you out of your comfort zone tonight a little bit, um, but it would be remiss of me not to um, acknowledge and thank you on behalf of all of the staff at Manningham Council, not just the current staff, but the staff that have been here um, over 10 years and indeed want to acknowledge the fact that um, one of your great strengths is the way in which you develop people, developed people, um, empowered people along the way uh, and right throughout your career there are a number of people that you have um, um, supported and indeed gone on to uh, significant leadership positions including CEOs. So I think it's really important um, to acknowledge that, to thank you and as I said um, earlier today, um, all the councillors have highlighted uh, the achievements that you've delivered, um, buildings, etc., in the municipality. Um, but the one thing that um, I think you can be um, particularly proud of as an achievement is walking out of an organisation with the unfailing uh, respect um, and love of the colleagues that you've worked with over that period of time and that are still here at Manningham. Uh, Council. So thank you, Lee, and the best of luck to you and your family. I have a point of order, but it's not really a point of order. There was one thing I forgot to file. Right to, right one thing I forgot to say, and that's about the greatest achievement. 
Now, I could be wrong. So if my, if my memory is getting really bad, please, Lee, speak up straight away. But there's a big white building out there and we couldn't find a name for it. Am I on the right track? Yeah. We couldn't... And we had all of these names and they were going around and we couldn't get a name. Now, I don't know whether you all realise that Lee is actually a rapper and, M <laughs> and, and MC Hammer was really big at the time and he said MC Squared. MC and a little square. He was sitting in his rightful place at, at, at the end of the table, just his voice came out and, of course, all the councillors were talking too much to listen, but he said it again quite, I think MC Square's pretty good. Now, we couldn't come up with a name that would suit the place. And that one did. So, for anyone here that didn't know, that the author of the concept of M and the name MC Square, so every time you see it, you'll think of Lee Harrison because he's the one that actually, he didn't think of the idea of building the building, but he thought of the naming rights of what we'd call it. So, for that, Lee, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, councillors. Thank you, councillors. So, I think we can now move on with the rest of the agenda. Item six, petitions. There are no petitions. Item seven, public question time. Uh, we have received several questions for public question time this evening, councillors. The first question we have tonight is from, from Mr Vincent Tester. Mr Tester, if you would like to come forward to the microphone, please. Thank you. As always, you have two minutes to make a brief introductory statement before asking your question. Thank you, Councillor, Mayor, CEO. <coughs> the December 9, 2019 article in the Leader newspaper states, Playground claims on a non-compliant child screen chair refuted and rubbish by a council officer. The tone and content of the rebuff has been a preemptive strike at me personally. A community member who submitted a child safety concern within a council playground. Following this regard from council, I attempted to secure wider appreciation and support via leader community story as a means to inform the community. Now, regarding my concern of refute and rubbish, the CEO of Manningham states, and I quote, that he has read them and in his view, they were entirely appropriate and professional, end of quote. Jumping to defend, and the, uh, jumping to defend the indefensible opinion on the equipment by the council assessor without evidence is definitely inappropriate and not professional. Your support of the officer's comments by saying they were appropriate and professional have not been substantiated with evidence from council or yourself. The original facts that I've submitted remain and can be tested anywhere. The position of the CEO of Manningham provides a certain level of stature. Your input in this critical incident does influence council policy and Manningham community attitude. In this circumstance, your views on professional and appropriate without supporting evidence is not being professional and not an appropriate behaviour and should not be condoned by anyone in my view. This unprofessional and inappropriate behaviour to discredit my integrity must stop and be rectified now. Manningham community deserves to be treated better by our officers. Question. Actually, it's a fact question. I've been informed by the Manningham City Council Office Mr. Al Harrison, Director of Manningham City Services, that mandatory playground safety inspections are done on a quarterly basis. Fact two, photographs taken prior to the 30th of October at 11.05 a.m. is showing that the child seat did not comply with the Australian safety standard. Fact three, according to the work schedule provided to me by Mr. Al Harrison, a safety inspection occurred on the 30th of October 2019 at the Boulevard Playground. Fact four. Order, Mr. Tester, will you yes, please read your question? It is my question. It is supporting Tester. the question. 
your question, please, or I will okay. rule, rule you out of order, and I don't want okay. to do that. Very simple. Only too happy to do that. Mr Day, as Chief Executive Officer of Manningham City Council, do you refute the four facts and the manufacturer's comment that I presented to you tonight? A yes or no response will suffice and appropriate. Thank you, Mr Tester. I'll first refer your question to the CEO. I'll take the entirety of the question, thank you, Mayor. Um, and certainly a yes or no um, answer won't, um, won't suffice in this instance. So thank you for the question and, and, and commentary. Um, I would start by saying that um, we are completely respectful and have been the whole way through in terms of the questions that you've asked of us and the, um, the information that you've provided. Um, in terms of the commentary in the paper, the commentary in the paper uh, by officers focused in on the facts in response to questions from the leader. The commentary that you uh, referred to in terms of you believing that your um, character was questioned was not made by officers. And I'm very comfortable with the professionalism of the response from the officers to the questions that we were asked in relation to that article. In terms of the information that you have provided us along the journey, that information has been taken seriously. It has been looked at by officers and considered in terms of our responses. So I stand by the fact that the response of the organisation to uh, the article was appropriate and professional, and I'm very comfortable with the fact that we have given the due respect um, that it deserved in terms of the information that you have provided us. May I ask a second question, please? Is it a brief question, Mr Test? Very brief. Do you refute or accept the evidence that I provided to you about the facts on the child screen with the process that have not been done properly? Mr Tester, the officers took the information that you provided, considered that information and have acted appropriately in terms of dealing with that swing. So thank you very much for providing us with that information. It's not information, they are thank, facts. Thank you, I Mr. thank Chester. you for your time. Thank you. The next question we have this evening is from Ms Yee. Thank you, Ms Yee. So again, you have two minutes to make an introductory statement before asking your question, please. Mm -hmm. Good evening, councillors, Mayor, Mr Day. Um, as coronavirus outbreaks continue to dominate the news cycle, here in Manningham we should take a moment to acknowledge that fears of contracting the virus has had a significant impact on our local businesses. In particular, Chinese restaurants and grocery stores have seen a huge drop by up to 50% in their everyday business. A number of restaurants had also made the decision to close for a few weeks. This loss of business has come at a time which is usually the busiest period for Chinese restaurants, that is, the Lunar New Year celebrations, and is placing many on the brink. If things do not improve fairly quickly, they may not recover from the losses. We should also acknowledge one other fact. Residents in Manningham who have returned from China in the last few weeks have been model citizens. Many have voluntarily isolated themselves for two weeks, no matter which part of China they came back from. They have done the right thing and the responsible thing, and in the process protected all of us in the community. If things settle down in the weeks to come, Manningham residents should feel safe to return to their normal routine and activities. My question to the council is, what will you do to encourage residents to start going out and patronising their local shops again? And what will you do to support businesses which are suffering? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jay. Uh, we're certainly very grateful for the um, 
the contribution to public safety that has been made by the citizens you've identified. Um, it's an important step that they've taken and does indeed help with confidence in our community. Uh, and it shows what great citizens they are in our city. There's no doubt about the economic, economic impact of the COVID-2019 virus. I met today with yourself and some local traders, with some of the council staff who told us of the, the business impact and its significance. We're certainly considering how we can support our local businesses. We're going to discuss the ideas and is issues that were raised at today's meeting and see what actions we're able to take in our, to encourage our community to do precisely what you've said, to buy from local businesses, to shop with local traders, and it's traders across the community. We know that it's extending right from the, the single food premises business right through to the major shopping centres. Turnover is down across the board. Uh, and it's important that we as a community, if we can, find a way to support those businesses, find a way to spend your money in a local business, and support them as best we can because when a downturn like this happens, it's very poor, very bad for local the businesses themselves and for all of the people they employ. So we'll be we'll be considering a range of options in support of those businesses. Thank you for your time and your interest. Thank you. We have another question from Mr Raymond Smith. Is Mr Smith in the chamber? Mr Smith, would you like to come forward to the microphone? Thank you, Mr. Smith. My name is Ray Smith. Uh, I've been a resident here since 19, uh, in Doncaster since uh, 1953. And uh, I've been um, the convener of uh, one of the uh, active supporters of council, uh, uh, an organisation called Ke Keeping Manningham a Quality Place to Live In. Uh, I, uh, 41 years ago, I used to be a senior lecturer in science education. I was also an athlete for 41 years ago. Uh, I've lost quite a bit of it, including my speaking voice here, so I do apologise for this. I've given you a hand out there. Please don't read the bottom part, but read the top part, please. Would you, could I just have a minute while you... Uh, Read the top part. Sure. Don't read the bottom part. Because this is the uh, part that I'm going to be speaking on and about. It says one of the council officers' directions. <coughs> now that you've read it, this is probably the second time because this was handed out to you all before. Could somebody tell me what that means? Because being, being a communications media in science, that's my expertise, I can't understand it. And I don't think any of you can either. But that's what's called obfuscation and it's verbiage. Now read the bottom part. Understand that? That's plain English. Now, this is an old technique that I object to. When you put stuff before the council that's, under, that's not understandable, and then you put the conclusion, which is plain, in plain English that everybody can understand. That is what's happened there. Now, I am objecting to Mr Lynch's uh, approval of this building. Now, it's been recognised by VCAT 
and council before as a legal building and demolition was ordered three times by council, by VCAT and by Justice Morris himself. And it was never enacted. This is a failure by the council and by council officers. Uh, now, with, with this present uh, application, I, by the way, I wish the developer uh, beside me all the best of luck with it. He is Croatia, Croatian, and uh, the place is built of mainly star, polystyrene. The walls are polystyrene. Even the fire walls is polystyrene. That's the stuff that burned down at Grenfell village. Uh, he comes uh, there. Mr. Jurkic comes from Croatia, Mr. and that's Mr. part Smith, of the European Union. Could you, that, Mr. Smith, could could you please come to the? Point I'm sorry. Ask, could you please come to the point and ask your question? Do you have a question of council? We understand yes. the issue that you're raising, and it's about something that's on the agenda. So if, perhaps if you, you could just come to the question now, please. I, I. Yes, is, the question is, is council willing to allow it, its council officers to ignore building regulations, present building regulations, in favour of, uh, of obeying them in some uh, future time when those uh, regulations may be acceptable? Right. Uh, Thank, Let thank me you, Mr. Smith. That. No, we, we have the question. It's all right. We, we have it in front of us. We're, I think we're ready to pass it on to one of the officers. So I'll direct the question to Mr. Angelo Corumbus, who's the Director of City Planning and Community. Uh, thank you for your. Thank you for your question, Mr. Smith. Um, look, the, the premise um, of your question. I, I don't agree with. We've outlined in the report in some detail the whole history. Oh, could you speak up, please, Um I've said we've outlined in the council report the whole history um, and the status of the current building on the site. Um, I don't agree with the, uh, the assumptions behind your, your comments and your questions. Um, what, we're, what the officers are proposing is that council tonight look at uh, advancing a planning scheme amendment to bring that site in line with all the surrounding neighbourhood and all the other properties in that area, including, including yours. Council's not being asked tonight to approve um, a planning permit for two dwellings. That, that would be a separate process. All the report is seeking to do tonight is advance an amendment to the next phase in which you will have an opportunity to be heard before an independent planning panel to, as I said, to bring that property from a planning perspective in line with planning policies and controls for that whole neighbourhood. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Crumbus. Thank you, thank you for your question, Mr Smith. We appreciate it, we understand it, and we encourage you to, when the panel hearing does occur, we encourage you to attend that panel hearing and and present your views to, on, the, on the proposal I'll, at the I'll panel hearing. I'll have to hearing. take that. Uh, I'm going to say I'm, I'm hard of hearing and I didn't bring my hearing aids, unfortunately, did I? So I'm at quite a disadvantage. That, that's OK, Mr. Smith. Could you speak up, please? That's OK, Mr. Smith. We'll, we'll make sure that the officers get the response to you in writing as well so you understand what we've said this evening. Is that OK? We'll get uh, it to you in writing. As I, well. I would appreciate it. Yes, we'll but then I, you. may I have a, a chance to respond to that? You'll have a chance at, at the panel hearing, and yes, you can always write to us on, based on their response to you. Yes, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, so we have one more question this evening, councillors, from a Mr. Tam Jan Lim. Mr Lim, if you'd like to come to the microphone to ask your question. So you have a couple of minutes to describe your issue and then ask no. your question. 
one man who claims himself to be the, uh, what do you call, Manningham Planning Compliance Officer, visited where I live to ask for my daughter. My daughter is the owner of the property. So I said to him, she's not in. And he wanted to see the areas, but he left. So when my daughter returned, I told my daughter about it. So my daughter said, ring him up and make an appointment and show him around. So we rang him up and he said he would be there within the hour. We waited the whole day, he never turned up. The question I want to ask is, is this man really a planning officer of Manningham Council? If he is, do you condone with such conduct? Thank you for your question, Mr. Lim. I'll refer the question to the CEO. Thank you for the question, Mr. Lim. Um, what we will do is we'll, we'll take that on notice. What we'll um, endeavour to do is get from you uh, the details, get your details, and so we can follow that up um, with you and, and confirm indeed if that was uh, an officer uh, and, and certainly speak with you in terms of uh, the service delivery. So we will get those details from you and, and work that through with you. Once here, may I also ask one simple question? Does Manningham Council take into account any questions raised by residents but not the owners of that property? See, I live behind my daughter's compound. Am I allowed to ask questions? Or do you, yes. you don't answer such the, questions? The answer is yes. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. You are. I have come to council here many times to tell them of little problems that we had. And months have passed. Nothing has been done. Well, so I wonder. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. We'll now move on to item eight, admission of urgent business. There are no items of urgent business. Item nine, planning permit applications, 9.1. Application for review of P19382019 of the planning permit application PLN180598 at 21 Glendale Avenue, Templestow, amended plans for BCAT. Councillor Piccinini. Councillors, I wish to disclose that I have a conflict of interest in this item, the interest being an indirect interest due to close association. I, be, I will be leaving the meeting room for du the duration of this matter. Thank you, Councillor. Councillors, do I have a mover for this matter? Mr Mayor, I move as on the paper. I assume you're moving the recommendation. The recommendation. Yeah, the officer, uh, the council recommendation. Officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Do I have a seconder? Yeah. Councillor Kleiner. Councillor Goff. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. And uh, I, I stand to uh, move this particular motion. Uh, this particular application did come through and it came and was dealt under delegation, of which uh, Council did refuse the application. Uh, it's gone off to VCAT, and I assume that in the proceedings of VCAT, they've come to some revised plans or whatever, and uh, VCAT have made a determination on those revised plans, saying we need to do these certain things. Our officers have, have looked at that and looked at a number of conditions that now need to be imposed but there have been quite a number of changes to the original application. Although it's the same amount of um, uh, units, there are less areas and less bedrooms within the facility, but also a uh, reduction in overall size and setbacks and a whole lot of other things that impacted the fact that the original building didn't go in. Now, aligned with that, this particular building is in an area I think it's a DDO8 area for Templestowe Village. And uh, in such, it's an area in which we have outlined in our planning scheme to have higher density living and higher density developments. And so it does fit within that. 
So that, this particular application, um, I think, is, it is a process because VCAT are waiting for us or whatever to get a determination back on our feelings. And to the officers who reported this one, they are addressing us and telling us that it fits within our rules and regulations, whereas before it didn't. And the actual <coughs> writings here just go through great detail of what did and what didn't fit and how it was changing. So, Mr Mayor, uh, I vote that we approve this application. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Kleiner. No, thank you, um, Mr Mayor. Just um, on point with what Councillor Goff has said, uh, it comes with uh, an additional uh, over 50... Um, Conditions. <laughs> Conditions. Uh, conditions. So I think council has worked uh, very hard to um, meet, yes, the zoning, but uh, to bring it back as much as possible. Um, and to refuse it now will make it very difficult. Um, this we pass and um, a development happens at the best of, of the work that's been done to the planning. I like the fact that the well over, I've lost count now. It's over 50 conditions. Um, so it's certainly um, been a difficult task, I'm sure, for council, but um, I see these as all good outcomes for the residents. When we know development is happening, um, the residents say that they all, they acknowledge development uh, will happen, change will happen. Not so friendly about that, but it's about um, the, the overdevelopment the greed of, of developments uh, that, that the residents don't like. And I, I see that this comes to a medium where, yes, development will happen, but um, within the constraints of um, uh, what we, <coughs> we have. So I think that's um, it's, it's a good outcome. Perhaps not the best, but I, I still think this is... We should uh, move and pass. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have any a speaker against the motion? Question from Councillor Zafropoulos, yes. Um, the report indicates that uh, if we do accept the recommendation, there are three possible outcomes, um, and those outcomes uh, are outlined there. The qu my question is, given that we have had lots and lots of revisions over a long period of time and the applicant accepted all those and now finally accepted and complied with all the 12 objections we had. What I'd like to know is uh, given that we are communicating with the applicant, do we know whether the applicant is willing to accept the conditions we've set? Thank you, Councillor. I'll put that question to the Director of uh, City Planning and Community, Mr Corumbus. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. We, we have been advised by the applicant that uh, they are prepared to accept these conditions. I should say, though, there's no guarantee at VCAT what they'll do, but they have advised us that the conditions <coughs> are acceptable. Thank you. Is there a speaker against the motion? Any other speakers for the motion? In that case, I will put the motion. Those for? Those against? That is carried. If we could have Councillor Piccinini return, please. Thank you, councillors. We shall move on to item 10, City Planning and Community, 10.1, Planning Scheme Amendment C130, MAN, Hyf for number 11, Toronto Avenue, Doncaster. Do I have a mover for this recommendation? Councillor Chen. I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you, councillor. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Zafiropoulos. Councillor Chen. Yes, Mr. Mayor, this agenda item is about planning scheme amendment C130 to delete BBO7 from Manningham planning scheme. 
And this overlay is a specific control, applies to 11 Toronto Avenue, Doncaster, that prescribes that the site must not be subdivided unless the submission, subdivision is in accordance with the planning permit. The permit was never acted upon and has expired, and the land cannot be divided. Many of us still have vivid memory of the historical events on this site. It was about whether the finished product was a single dwelling which did not require a planning permit or a duplex, and a number of VCAT decisions. A request to delete the overlay was brought to Council last year. In <coughs> August Council meeting, Council resolved to seek the Planning Minister's authorization to prepare the proposed amendment and planning permit for two-story two dwellings. Council received the authorization in October to prepare the authorization excluding the planning permit application. <coughs> The amendment excluding the planning permit application was exhibited and one objection was received, including one late supplementary submission. The submissions mainly address the past historical events. Even the submissions did not request a change to the amendment, it is important that Council ensure all submissions have been duly considered and due process is followed. We need to ensure that the submitter will have the opportunity to be heard on this matter. So I ask my fellow councillors' support to the officer's recommendation to refer the submissions to the independent panel for consideration. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Councillor Zafropoulos. Nothing. Thank you, councillor. Is there a speaker against the motion? I just would like to make a comment. Not Are there any other speakers for the motion? Yeah, so I'd like to speak. I'm not speaking against the motion because I do want it to go to a panel. Um, but there are just a few clarifications and things to add. Um, there, there was only one objective to this one going forward, but in the past, KMQ and SOS, which is Keep Manningham Equality Place and Save Our Suburbs, really worked hard through the VCAP processes and everything else. And I'm certain that, um, thankfully, there is a yoursaymanningham.com.au C130 man on the website. So there are people that are able to add themselves to this. So I'm looking forward to having uh, further discussions with people in the community that do have their concerns, which many of them have been worn out through this process. So, Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other speakers for the motion? No. Councillor Goff. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I rise to speak uh, to put this motion and make it go further. Now, as a councillor, I can sit here and work on emotions, and I don't think emotions are the best way to make uh, good decisions. Quite honestly, if anyone does know the history, and I was here throughout that history, uh, the history was a person, the, the definition of a house, the definition of a whole lot of things came into question because a person did, at the time, try to build two houses facing the street pretending it was one house, with two front doors, two lots of bathrooms, lounge rooms, bedrooms, a parting wall, separate electricity, separate water, separate sewer, Garrett the whole lot. And it was to get around, it was to get around the planning process. You didn't have to come to council, you could build a house, uh, and you didn't need to come to us at all for planning permits. You did need to get a building permit. Now, it went through VCAT, it went through courts, it was seen to be two houses and not one, and there were demolition orders, but things in the courts came through over, over years. This hung around, and eventually it was... I, look, I hope I'm correct, but eventually there were modifications made that you could get from one side to the other, and it was used from that point on, instead of being pulled down, as a single dwelling. Now, Mr Mayor, now, please, what I need a, just a nod from uh, Mr Corumbus because that was before the area was zoned DD08. Did I get a yes? Before the current provisions, yes. The current, the current provisions apply. Yes. The current, de current provisions allowing two houses to face the street side by side. 
Yes. To have in a whole area an anomaly, and we have lots of anomalies, but to allow them to persist for what reason now? For no reason now. So we need to test this and see what happens at the panel. Because the best thing we can do is have a simplified planning scheme and say, listen, the whole area around there, the house one side, the other side, and by the way, because the owner of this property at that time did something wrong, all future owners forever and ever, whoever buy it in the future or whatever, have to suffer the sins. It's sort of like the original sin. Uh, you know, it, it's sort of passed on. Like, so from this point, so we need to sit back. Now, the emotional part of me says, we shouldn't let someone get away with that. I shouldn't let someone get away with that. We've got to resist at all points. But at some stage, you've got to look and say, hey, what do we really need to do as a responsible authority? We've got an area. We've got things now that are compliant uh, with, with everything. And do we continue down that path? Or do we try and make our area? Because we need those areas for this sort of development because they've been identified as areas we need to have extra development in to protect the remaining areas of Manningham from higher density development. And that's what they're for. And this is one of those particular areas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Question. Question from Councillor Zafiropoulos. My question relates to this particular application, but it, it has relevance for any future application. Uh, from what I've read, there's only one objection, and the objection does not address the issue in question. It basically outlines the history of the event. My question is, uh, it does cost council money every time we have an independent panel assess things. Um, if there's no objection to the amendment, why do we need to... I know why, but I'm asking the question in order for us to know that we're incurring probably unnecessary expenditure. Why do we have to go to a panel when it's pretty obvious that... And, and reading all the responses to the objector, it's pretty obvious that the independent panel, and I shouldn't say that because he wouldn't be independent, no. but nevertheless, my assessment of the situation tells me that uh, the objection will be overruled. So why do we have to pay unnecessary money for such a thing? <coughs> Thank you, Councillor. I will ref I'll refer the question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr Corumbus. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks for the question. Um, uh, I suppose, firstly, the costs of the panel process will be borne by the applicant. Um, the of council's costs will effectively be officer time. Um, and in terms of why we've recommended this, un under the Act, um, as we've outlined in the report, you know, we can refer submissions to the panel. The submission and the supplementary submission you know, wasn't clear, as we've outlined in the report, but the objector has outlined, as you've heard today, a long history of the site and has made all sorts of allegations about inappropriate decision-making and officer behaviour, etc. And we just thought, in the interest of uh, full transparency and good governance, that we go through the full process. Thank you. Are there any other speakers for or against the motion? In that case, I'll put the motion. Those for? Those against? Sorry, that was a yes. Sorry, that was for. Thank you, Councillor. I was somewhere else. That motion is carried. <laughs> Item 11, City Services, 11.1, .1, the Active for Life Recreation Strategy, 2010 to 2025 to 2019 review. Do I have a mover? Councillor Kleiner. That the recommendation be adopted. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Chen. Councillor Kleiner. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This is to endorse the um, re Life Recreation Strategy for 2010-2025, um, the review. Um, this went out to consultation last October. There was 35 submissions with over 300 people 
um, looking and reading the document. Uh, most of those, uh, actually I think all of those submissions came through uh, with people between the age of uh, 45 and uh, 64. And when we talk about uh, life recreation, that's active uh, living, active recreation and also organised sport. Um, so this basically will assist um, our sporting and recreation infrastructure um, across Manningham as far as in our planning. Uh, there's a few... Uh, it feeds into some other strategies, so um, the Healthy Life Strategy, Open Space Strategy. It's a great document. Uh, a lot of work's been done and I think it, it helps um, guide us into uh, the next ooh, five years. Uh, so a very good document and uh, I believe uh, a, a document that uh, hopefully we're all endorsing tonight um, about uh, the very active Manningham that we are because uh, we live longer in Manningham, we live healthier in Manningham than most of other uh, Victorian municipalities according to um, some stats that have come out. Uh, thank you uh, again, uh, Mr Harrison, for uh, this is part of your team has worked on that under your leadership. So tonight, hopefully, we endorse one of the last things of the work that you've been part of. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Chan. Because it's Ms Lee Harrison's team to produce the document, so I just take the time just to say a few things about this beautiful draft documents, Healthy City Strategy. And uh, of course, the community feedback was generally supportive. And of course, we still just to better the strategy and some amendments have been proposed. And just, I, want just, I just want to touch on those amendments. And in the foster, for, uh, foster <coughs> and environment of inclusion priority area, it highlights participation opportunities for older adults. It uh, so it also includes called communities and people with a disability and their carers, and a particular focus on reducing social isolation. And the action plan is, in high is a high-level action plan, and many of the actions will consider diverse sport and recreation activities in Manhattan. And aquatic needs and future developments has been expanded to consider indoor, dry, programmable youth spaces and usage agreement for private land will be considered to meet sporting needs of our community. And open space planning has been expanded to consider infrastructure to facilitate longer duration stays within council's open space areas. Council's active, in, I have to touch on council's active involvement in the planning for the proposed North East Link project has also been expanded to include assisting clubs impacted by the project and advocating for offset of lost occupied open space. So if it endorsed tonight, the beautiful strategy will be implemented and will occur until 2025. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker against the motion? Are there any other speakers for the motion? I'll put the motion. Those four. Against. That is carried. Item 12, shared services. There are no shared <coughs> services report. Item 13, chief executive officer. Item 13.1, determination of mayor mayoral and councillor allowances. Do I have a mover for this particular recommendation? Councillor Galvaly. I'd like to move the motion be adopted. Thank you, councillor. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Piccinini. Councillor Galvaly. Uh, yes, well, uh, this uh, is actually what I'm asking is for council to endorse in principle the, um, the mayoral allowance and councillor uh, allowance to go up to public notice um, for the, uh, as a proposal um, for acceptance. It is actually just to help us, uh, Manningham Council, um, to come in line with other Victorian councils into the Category 3 area, which is the um, similar size councils across Victoria. Uh, our neighbouring Burundara and, I uh, believe, Whitehorse are in similar 
a manual and in similar situation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Piccinini. Nothing to add, Mayor. Thank you. Are there any speakers against the motion? Are there any other speakers at all? Councillor Zafiropoulos. Mr Mayor, I think it's important that we um, say uh, something that I have read in the Know Your Council report, uh, which compares councils in all sorts of things, including uh, the expenditure that councillors incur. And can I just uh, say with pride that this council, when compared with similar councils, uh, spends ten to eleven thousand dollars less than any other council per councillor. Thank you, councillor. Are there any other speakers for or against the motion? <coughs> In that case, I'll put the motion. Those for. Those against. That is carried. Item 13.2, Manningham Quarterly Report, Quarter 2, October to December 2019. Do I have a mover for this recommendation? Councillor Chen. Mr Mayor, I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Goff. Councillor Chen. Uh, Mr Mayor, the purpose of quarterly report is to promote transparency and legislative requirements. And the report contains key capital works, finance, and uh, corporate performance information for this quarter. In regard to capital works, Council completed 34 projects in the first quarter. In the second quarter, Council completed 53 projects. Another 135 projects started and progressing well. Nearly 10 million dollars in works have been undertaken and a further 10 million dollars has been committed. Council also commit, uh, conducted mid-year review in December and reallocated 7.6 million dollars funding from at-risk projects to projects more easily completed this financial year. Council also makes changes to address high-risk projects to offset future impacts on the budget performance. A further seven projects have been brought forward, totaling $252,000. As to finance, our operating result was slightly below the budget target by 0.3%, which was uh, $0.2 million. The variation was related to lower than budgeted function center hall high fees and planning application fees and higher than budgeted expenses associated with the North East Link project. In regard to corporate, perfor uh, corporate performance, Council has made significant investment into resources and process improvement over the past few years in, uh, in statutory planning performance. I'm pleased to advise that planning decisions made within 60 statutory days has improved from 89% to 96.3%, which is a great achievement. As to the overall corporate performance, Council is on track to deliver 92.4% actions and on target with 77% of key performance indicators. It is important to acknowledge that major initiatives are significant pieces of work to deliver on the Council plan goal, and all of the 13 major initiatives are on track. By way of example, our community will be delighted to know that one of the major initiatives is Municipal Drainage Plan. The plan will include a response to flood mitigation and is being developed by June 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Goff. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, there's nothing much I can add to that other than saying a couple of things, and that is that uh, our way in which for people like me that don't like reading lots, 
our report is set out is just so simple and easy for people to read. Congratulations to the department, to the organisation for A, first of all, and I know it's been around for about two years now, a year and a half, two years, but it is a really great way of reading a snapshot. In fact, it reminds me, of, you know when you've got those shareholders, uh, uh, things they're putting shares up and you've got all these booklets and that, it really looks like one of those. Shareholders in Manningham, we're all shareholders in Manningham and we can have, have a very quick look at, uh, at where we're going and, and uh, what we're doing. But uh, I think one of the things is, that is just a measurement of what we're doing and the thing is, if there's something down, we can improve it. If there's something better, we, we've, we've got our eye on it. And the one thing that I'm very proud with is that we had a number of, not for our own fault, for a number of reasons, a number of developments or, or, or capital works programs were unable to keep going or going through at the time frame we had them down for. Because unfortunately, building doesn't fit within a 1st of uh, July to the 30th of June time frame. And, uh, and if the money's not there from when the budget's there, it, it delays and a lot of the stuff keeps going through. So we did. We're agile. We made a whole lot of uh, changes to our works. That's described in here in detail. But you know, we, do, we have made those changes to be able to uh, use our ratepayers' money on building as much as we can, which we've allocated in the year that we've allocated it. And that's very important. The easiest thing to do for many people is to just hang it over and then the next year you have a bit of a bigger capital works program, or worse still, some councils don't uh, fund that and they'll use the leftovers to go towards the next element of, of, of that. And we don't do it here, and it's very, very good. So being able to put this out and to put it out very clearly, congratulations on all the officers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a speaker against the motion? Are there any other speakers for the motion? I'll put the motion, those four. Against, that is carried. <coughs> Item 13.3, documents for sealing. Do I have a mover for this particular item? Councillor Haynes. I move that the alternative motion that has already been distributed be adopted. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a second? Councillor Piccinini. Councillor Haynes. Uh, nothing to add. Thank you, Councillor. I'll put the motion, those four. Against, that is carried. Record of Assembly of Councillors, item 13.4. Do I have a mover for this particular item? Councillor Conlon. I'd like to move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Zafiropoulos. Councillor Conlon. No. Thank you, Councillor Zafiropoulos. No. Thank you. I'll put the motion, those four. Against, that is carried. Item 14, urgent business. There are no items of urgent business. Item 15, councillor question time. Councillors, do you wish to raise any questions? Councillor Conlon. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just in regard to the active life strategy, uh, sorry, it's not in regard to this, but it's really about sports in general. And uh, I was chatting to a, a young gentleman today about mountain biking and the sort of the need for mountain biking facilities within Manningham, as there are in other areas. And I was wondering if we could uh, ask for a report to come back to through the SPS process so that we can actually consider how that is um, being catered for and what are, the, what are the options in terms of providing those facilities. Thank you, Councillor. Mr CEO. Um, thank you for the question, Councillor. Um, we can certainly come back to Council and SBS briefing to advise um, on options and opportunities in terms of mountain biking in the municipality. Um, as you as you note, it is part of the the strategy that's just been adopted uh, by Council, um, and certainly aware that there's a um, a young gentleman uh, in our municipality who's leading the way from that perspective too and, um, and, and receive some information from him. Um, understand that uh, at some point in time he may well come and ask council a question here in the chamber as well. So we'll certainly follow that up and look to, to bring some advice back to council. Thank you, Mr CEO. Any questions from any other councillors? <coughs> Thank you. Okay, item 16, confidential reports. Do I have a mover for this particular item? Councillor Haynes. 
I move that Council declares item 16.1 Melbourne Hill Road catchment drainage improvement options is no longer confidential information and that the report be considered in the open meeting of Council. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder for this motion? Councillor Zafropoulos. Councillor Haynes, do you wish to speak to this motion? Uh, no. Thank you. Councillor Zafropoulos, I'll put the motion therefore. Those four. <coughs> Against, that is carried. Councillors, there are copies of uh, the confidential item available for members of the public who are in the chamber. If they wish to see the report and copies will be made available online, I am certain. Councillors, for this particular matter, I would like to vacate the chair for the duration of this item to fully enter the debate. Can I please have a motion to appoint the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Zafropoulos, as chairperson to enable this to occur? Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Piccinini. I move that Councillor McLeish vacate the chair in favour of Councillor Zafropoulos for the remainder of the meeting. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Galbally. I will put that motion as four. Against, that is carried. Councillor Goff uh, temporarily abs absented himself, but we might as well proceed. Uh, we've got item 16.1, Melbourne Hill Road, Catsman Drainage Improvement Options. Do I have a motion? Councillor Cornell. Thank you, Councillor Zafiropoulos. I'd like to move that the councillor's alternative motion be adopted. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor Galbally. Councillor Connor. Yes, well, so goes the ongoing saga of Melbourne Hill Road. Um, uh, 20, 2015, November 2015, a decision was made by Council to proceed with a certain design. Since then, uh, we've had the rate scheme modified. We've got a lot more information regarding the costs and in regard to the scheme, which has gone up significantly. And we all have also had a lot more information regarding the number of trees that had to be removed to facilitate that scheme. The officers have done a great, great amount of work and I really appreciate that they've come back to us in an open and transparent way and said, well, you've got now two options. One is to go with the original uh, scheme with modifications to reduce the number of trees, which is their option one. and the other alternative is to basically provide all the infrastructure but without the same number of points of discharge for the properties within the catchment. There is a significant uh, cost difference between those two and I believe that the benefits in terms of, the, of achieving the objectives of the scheme, which is to, uh, you know, is, is basically to reduce the risk of flooding in, in flood events is achieved in both designs and there's a, with the modification of this alternative motion, which now includes the easement, uh, it, 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 sorry, includes, includes costing for the easement yeah. on the, um, uh, sorry, on the areas behind the houses which aren't covered by the scheme. Um, there is now, there's a $1 million difference between the two proposals, essentially, and it's for this $1 million that, and for the reduced number of trees, which is still an option too, that I stand and propose this uh, alternative motion for. My, in my discussions with the residents in the area, um, when I first joined council, was that they, were, they didn't understand, well, the ones I met anyway, they didn't understand why council would spend the extra money, um, and now we're at a point where we can make a decision on that. So again, I appreciate the officer's input and uh, frank advice, and I am, stand, I am promoting that we advocate for, uh, we choose option two out of that scheme. In terms of the future, 
terms of the basic, basically what it does is, is provides the core infrastructure for the drainage and the design between the two is the, essentially the same except for um, some, some, tr uh, some branches that run behind properties which would be optional for um, residents to attach to. So it doesn't necessarily, option one doesn't necessarily provide any immediate relief for, um, for drainage over option two. And I, am, and I believe this has been going on so long, we're better off at this point going ahead with option two. And if down the track another council makes a decision about you know, putting those extra branches in, that's fine. Let's have that discussion when we're fully informed. And I appreciate the design takes time Good design takes time, and that's what we've done over five years now. <laughs> Hang on, four years. Try eight and ten. No, I'm, I'm talking about since 2015, since the last decision. Over four years, obviously a lot more work's gone in, and we've got a lot, lot more detail. And thus, the costs have gone up. And the costs originally were assumed to be 2.2 million. We're now talking about 4.8 million, and I think it's good governance to actually reconsider this. So. Um, Let's have a strong and robust debate about Thank it. Thank you. Councillor Conlon. Seconder. Councillor Gulbull. Do I speak next to it? OK. I, I thought I got a chance to hear... No, no. Yeah, cool. Um, OK, uh, as the story goes, this is a long and drawn-out process and I'm actually quite um, happy to support the option two, especially with the um, added um, E... Um, on, on the alternative motion, which actually um, gives further protection for any future need for um, properties to, that want to extend into the future drains. Um, so at least then council have already purchased the property at today's prices rather than um, in the inflated future. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's to me, I know to a lot of People. It's just about the dollar saving, but um, going beyond that, I, I, I actually support the fact that you know we will be saving an extra million dollars on this project, and we're still getting the required um, mitigation for fl flooding that is the project's initiative uh, right from the beginning. That was why it came to the table, as far as I understand. And then it was um, uh, taken a bit further, needing... We'll, we'll hear about why. Um, so, aside from the, the cost of uh, saving of, on, the, on the dollar value, what I... The, the cost to the environment is larger. If we're losing so many trees, close to between two and 300 trees, because if they're, sa if they're telling us 200 trees, once you start taking trees out, their neighbouring trees are going to fall over. You know, th there's not that um, um, collection of... Um, that is the trees aren't standing alone. They're, they're in groups. And it's a very treed area. It's why people have moved in there. It'll change the environment for the residents for a good 10 years to allow for these trees to re regrow. Um, and I hate to think what it, it would do to their resale value within the 10 year. So the property value will uh, be affected, I'm sure, um, if, if we went through with option one. Option two gives us a softer change where we would be seeing maybe a loss of 100 trees plus. Um, that in itself is going to be significant, but um, it will be a, an easier thing to cope with in the environment, plus the fact that they're not doing all the extra dredging and, and um, digging into the backyards and front yards of these properties, because let's face it, all this drainage is going to be on, the prop, on private property, not on council property. So all these residents are going to suffer, not only in the near future, but for years to come, because any landscaping, whatever they've done, is going to be impacted. And then, aside from our trees, once we lose that, and with the amount of dredging and and rock um, cutting and and um, and works being uh, held there, it's the bird life and the fauna that's going to also um, be impacted. So, 
to me, I think, why go with option one when option two is giving us the same flood mitigation? It's saving council $1 million, and that is even after we buy the uh, required easements for future protection for um, any extra drainage. And seriously, why should we pay now for the possibility, and only a possibility, for if and when someone wants to build uh, into the future? That, that sort of cost into their build should be part of their, um, their wear and tear and their costing, not councils and not the residents. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Galbally. Any objections? Councillor. Mr Chair, I have a few questions, if I may, before yes. I speak. <laughs> thank you. So... My first question is, is looking at the impact on a couple of properties that are, would be outside option two. So they're properties at 20 and 22 Melbourne Hill Road. Um, when I've looked at the maps for this particular, um, these particular properties, um, the, the maps show that uh, six to seven trees would be lost to build the, uh, the drains to those properties. Um, and in option two, the land isn't serviced at all. So those two properties end up with nothing. Um, I can see, however, there's at least a dozen other trees in the, in, in the easements that would service these properties. And I'd like to understand from officers why those um, seven or a dozen other trees or so aren't impacted in the council's option one. How, is it, how do we go about avoiding those dozen or so other trees? Um, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, with the council design for those particular properties, the outfall for those two properties extends um, a number of properties beyond there. But essentially, the section of pipe between uh, properties 18, 20 and 22 Melbourne Hill Road will be um, what we call pipe jacked. So they'll be bored and the pipes push through, which, which preserves the trees rather than doing an open cut. Thank you. Um, so if um, at some point later these two properties were forced to, um, to build a drain, and my understanding of their situation is that's exactly the situation for these two properties, um, that would, um, is, am I correct to understand that um, it would be then built privately and would be their responsibility normally? And uh, if so, <coughs> are we likely to see loss of those other dozen trees when it's built privately? Because, of course, pipe jacking is more expensive. So could you advise what, uh, who's going to be responsible if they have to build it privately? And uh, would they be forced to pay for pipe jacking or is that paid for in some other manner? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, or Mr Deputy Mayor, sorry. Um, the, um, the answer is um, dependent on... Um, what council would determine at the time. So, yes, um, there's a planning requirement for those properties that have those two properties that have developed to do an outfall drain if we don't provide one as a part of the scheme. Um, you would imagine um, that they would be looking to construct that outfall um, in the cheapest way possible for themselves. Um, the pipe will have to be upsized as it goes down through the downstream properties and normal practice is council pays for the upsizing on, on what they would otherwise have installed if it was just a pipe for their, for their two properties. But if council chose to, um, we could also pay extra, I'd imagine, to um, enable pipe jacking. But um, I would be highly surprised if the two particular properties agreed to pay the additional cost of pipe jacking. Thank you. So, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, <coughs> so, would they be required to build a one in five year or a one in hundred year drain? What's the, the likely outcome? I mean, you've just told us that there, there's going to be additional cost, potentially additional cost for council. Um, what happens with pipe sizes? Are they building one in five year or one in a hundred year? And, and that's all we'd require, is that correct? Thank you. I have a few questions about trees as well, Mr. Chair. Um, 
there. No um, problem. So my understanding is option one is 206 trees and option two is 114. So am I correct to understand the difference is 92 trees? I think it's, it's all in the papers. Thank you. So table 12, the table on page 12 of the um, pink papers, so it's attachment four, there's a little table here which lists all of the trees that are lost. It talks about trees of none to low arbicultural significance. Could you tell me what that means, please? Through you, Mr Deputy Mayor. I'm going to have to read this, I apologise. Um, Low arbicultural uh, rating trees are trees of low quality or little amenity value. They're a tree in poor health or with poor structure. They are a tree, the tree is not significant for its size or it's young, it's a sapling. Um, they are trees which are readily replaceable or they are tree species that are functionally inappropriate for the specific location. No arbicultural rating trees are trees that have a severe structural defect or a health problem that cannot be sustained with uh, arbicultural techniques and the loss of the tree would be expected in the short term. Trees whose retention would not be viable, or they could be trees whose retention would not be vi viable after removal of adjacent trees, or they could be trees that have a detrimental effect on the environment, for instance, the tree is a woody weed. Thank you, that's a very comprehensive answer because when I look at this table, <coughs> it tells me that um, under option two, there would be 32 trees of none to low rating lost and option one, there'd be 69. So if my understanding of the maths of this is correct, there's 37 extra low value trees that would be lost under option one. And that is 37 of the um, 92 trees. So over a third of the trees that would be lost, from what I can see, are of low significance. Is that right? I'm checking the table just as you are. Third last line in the table. Yep. So it's 37 difference. So of the 92 trees lost in option one as opposed to option two, a third of them or more are of none to low value. Thank you for your patience, councillors, and for the answers, Mr Harrison. I'd like to speak against the motion, if I now yep, may. Yep, please Mr. do. Chair. Councillors, from my perspective, option two is a wholly inadequate outcome. This council has twice decided to proceed with option one in various forms in March 2013 and November 2015. The tree losses under both plans are not minor. But the tree losses, as we've just seen, come down to a far smaller number of significant trees it's around one per property. So we're looking at 58 properties that wouldn't be served, would not be serviced under option two. <coughs> there are 125 houses in this catchment, councillors. Option one will provide the stormwater outfall for 89 of them. 71% of the catchment will get a stormwater outfall through option one. Option two will service 31 properties, a quarter of the catchment. This will leave 46% of the properties in the catchment, 46% of 125 properties, will be left without a stormwater outfall, 57 properties. This means we'll be spending 3.8 million on drains to manage flooding, but we'll provide a drainage outfall for a quarter of the properties. Yet for an extra $968,000, we could extend the works to complete the stormwater drainage for the whole catchment. $968,000 is no small amount of money. It's an important amount of money. Hmm. But it's $16,700 per property. 58 properties serviced at the rate of $16,700 per property. 
That doesn't sound to me like a significant amount of money to provide a stormwater outlet to those 57 properties. How is it equitable for us to pick winners to say 31 properties deserve to get a very expensive outfall drain? Yes, it solves the flooding in the catchment, but why are we abandoning the other 57 households to the expense? The expense has been estimated for the two properties that um, have requirements under their planning permits to build the drain. Two properties, the expense is $60,000 for those two properties. And that's an old bill. Today's cost, we don't know quite what it was, but that's an old estimate at $60,000. How is it equitable to leave Drysdale Road, most of the houses in Drysdale Road, without a point of drainage? These are your average suburban homes on a curb and channel street, normal looking suburban homes, they do not have a formal point of discharge for their water, for their storm water. And this process will still leave them in that situation. I cannot see how this is reasonable, councillors. From my perspective, this is a simple thing, councillors. The local government set acts says that councils are responsible for the management and control of drains in our city. In this catchment, there are very few stormwater drains provided to the houses. It's down to us as a council, in my view, to build them. That this hasn't been built over the decades isn't something that we are accountable for. It's the actions and inactions of development and planning permits over decades that has led us to this point. I appreciate that. But I believe it's our, our responsibility not to implement a partial Definitely. solution. OK. Good. Thank you. I'm, I'm not quite finished if I... Well, yeah, would, would you like to... Are... Yeah, I've, I've got a motion for uh, an extra two minutes. Uh, moved by Councillor Goff, seconded by Dr Haynes. Uh, all in favour? Against? Carried? Councillor McLeish? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Sorry, <laughs> Councillors, we can implement a partial solution. We can implement option two. It does provide flood mitigation, as we've seen in the report. But I don't believe it's equitable. The cost of 55 extra significant trees, one significant tree per house that gets a drainage outfall, less than one just less than one. In the scheme of things, that's not a huge price. They can be replanted, they will regrow. There are a lot of trees in this particular catchment. If you've ever been through it, you'll know that. But I don't believe this community can be left, we, that we should be leaving 58 homes lacking stormwater drainage. It's a second class solution to leave the owners of 46% of the houses in the catchment, almost half, facing major costs for renovations. If they want to extend their home, if they want to increase the hard surface area, they have to apply for a planning permit, they will be met with a requirement to provide a stormwater outfall. They will then be met with a very significant bill. Why are we condemning 58 homeowners in the catchment to that cost and giving a prize to 31 properties at a very significant cost for those 31 properties? $3.8 million to service those 31 properties. I don't believe we didn't create this problem, but we should be the authors of a, an equitable solution for all of the households in the catchment. If this was in Doncaster, every household in the streets in Doncaster and Doncaster East, they all, virtually all, have a stormwater outfall. They don't suffer flooding in their homes. And when there is flooding, we address it. I don't believe it's equitable to leave this catchment in this state. We should be standing by the decisions we made in March 2013, November 2015, and we should move ahead with an equitable solution, option one. When the ratepayers in this catchment were surveyed last time this issue came up, 36% of the respondents said if it was paid for by council, they would support it. One third of the survey responses, their first preference said that. There are a lot of other complications in the responses. But the community out there is saying 
there is strong support. It's not perfect support, but there is strong support there for a solution. And I okay. believe that's what we should provide. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Any councillor who wishes to speak for the motion? Against? I have some um, questions. A question? Yes, at first, but also with a bit of a preamble to the history of this, for those of us that know. Request questions. A question? No preamble. Oh, well, um, as a question, um, for the many years of experience that I've had on this matter, um, there's been a lot more than two options, but today we've got two. Um, there's been more than six that I've seen through Roger Wood, like our officer, and um, regularly at our SBSs, uh, our briefing sessions. But I'm also wondering, um, has the motion that has been passed at Council in the past, is that still relevant? Is that still part of what we're looking at doing? Um, and would that need to be set aside to pass tonight? Um, I'm happy to be guided by governance on this, but this, this resolution would override previous resolutions of Council. Okay. So, thank you. So, there has been a resolution in the past, correct, that for the Melbourne Hill Road drainage scheme? Correct, yeah. Yes. Yes. Sure. So, yeah, okay. So, there's been two resolutions and they continue to get overridden by others. And I'm hoping that this might be the end of it, but I doubt it. I'm looking forward to the years ahead uh, because I too stand to speak against this motion and stand for option one um, with the many articulate reasons that Councillor, um, the Mayor, Councillor McLeish has mentioned. Um, so I would also like to add that um, being part of the process for the many years, councillors, to the new ones that are here, um, I, I'd like you to consider that some of these um, houses and options and tree issues have been dealt with many times and no one's going to be happy with whatever gets happens. And it was mostly about the cost. Um, I went to so many hearings and um, I'm really hoping that if we do pass um, this new one, which is a very big change to what we've already passed at Council, that we consider doing community consultation and, and actually having it um, be discussed with the um, 58 houses and properties that will be missing out just by a swipe of the decision here that a couple um, of councillors or the majority might decide. I think we need to really consider the fact that this is not only the 31 properties that are going to be uh, fortunate, but the 58 that will miss out. And, and the consultation that will need to occur, in my view, as to what would happen for um, the change that is quite substantial, councillors. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Any other? Yes, Councillor Gough? Speak for the motion, Mr Mayor. Um, Listen, I rise to speak in favour of this motion. I, I'm amazed that councillors can say that we haven't considered things and all the rest we have. We've had meetings, we've had lots of times it's come back. It's come back a number of times and yes, it did come up in 2013 and it did come up and there was a payment scheme, all right? And we, we used to share, there used to be a, a, a thing that every other person in this municipality paid for drainage for their properties. They either paid it before they bought the property or they paid afterwards, when we did a scheme. We, a, number, a couple of years ago, we got rid of that scheme. The big thing was twofold. It wasn't just the scheme, it was the destruction of the trees and the denuding of the area and the putting it through the whole area. The people live, and a lot of the people live there, it's not a regular uh, uh, house block area. It is a, a little bit, uh, it's very hilly, uh, and it's also rural-ish. It's rural in nature. And, and basically, uh, this area has, and the area that was flooding was down the bottom. There were about three houses down the bottom that flooded. The rest of the place really didn't flood. Now, we're spending a lot of money, and I find it very good. I would like the people that live in Bulleen, the people that live in Templestowe, the people that live in Doncaster that have been flooded recently, to have $16,000 each spent on their properties too. We are, have got here a compromise. And it's I mean, a long time. And it's a compromise between 
a whole, denuding the whole area, pulling out more trees in a climate crisis mode that we're in at the moment, we're needing all the trees we can get. And yet, you know, we've got to pull it. And we've got a good compromise here. And we're also assigning the pathways for every house. So if in the future it needs to connect, we have the easement. And so therefore they can do it. And yes, if you want to redevelop your property, if you want to build a whole lot more stuff there, if you want to do a whole lot of hard services, well, you're going to have to pay that cost and not put it on the ratepayers or the rest of the municipality to pay for yours there. Now, we did have a scheme. We've put it out. We have to look very closely at the dollars we spend, and a million dollars is a million dollars. $16,000 a household. I think there'd be a lot of households in the remainder of Manningham that would love that money shared amongst all of them, that million dollars amongst all of them or a million dollars amongst everybody. We talk about how problem we are with money. We talk about how we can't put rates up because of the capping. And I think it's a good thing in many ways. But the th fact is, money is hard to come by. This is a solution. And in the future, if those houses do nothing, they don't have to pay anything. There's not going to be a flood. But in the future, they want to add to the drainage on hard surfaces then they're going to have a clear path that we're putting aside in this particular motion that they're going to need to put the drain in, and yes, they have to pay for it. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Any other comments for, against, or yet? Yeah? Um, Chair, I'd like to speak against the motion. I, I echo um, the Mayor's comments about option one or two, and it's not... It is inequitable, in my view, as well, to the properties that miss out. Um, we have talked at length about um, these proposals over the last four years. And in relation to our residents and how maybe, you know, they would also like $16,000, I actually think our residents wants us to do the right job and do it well. And to do the right job and do it well, we should go with option one, in my view. It is the, it is the most um, appropriate option. It's the most fair and equitable option. And also, in relation to the trees that we're missing, a third of them have, don't have a lot of value, as um, Councillor McLeish uh, commented. And also, when we looked at the plans, most of the trees that will be lost are at the back of the properties. So um, the, the argument that, that, that this neighbourhood will lose its character because it's going to lose 100, 100 extra trees that people will notice as they're driving through or walking through that suburb um, doesn't quite sit with um, a, a, a critical look at the trees that will go a third of them, at the extra 90 trees that will go, a third of them of no value, and most of them at the back of the properties. So I, 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 I speak against the motion. OK. Um, any other comments? If not... Point of order, Mr Chair. Yes. Mr Chair, um, I would like to flag that um, if this option, foreshadow if this particular motion is lost, that I would actually move the original recommendation in the officer's report. Right, thank you. OK, road of reply. Oh, sorry. The original motion. Oh, sorry. Not supported. That's right. Yeah, he's sorry. foreshadowing yeah, yeah. that you so, will yeah. move a motion oh, if it's right. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the road of reply. That's all right. Is it, is it, you, you, you wish to speak? It's sorry, I didn't see you, Anna. Sorry. Did, were you going to speak? I thought I saw your hand. Oh, no, 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 I didn't speak for the motion. Yeah. yeah, okay. That means you yes, have to sum up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can sum up. Yeah, no, no. No, let's hear oh, it. Yeah. Once I stand up, that's it. All right. No. I just want to speak for the motion, and I echo Councillor Goff's comments, because I remember when I first came to council, it came up. And in the past four years, I couldn't remember how many times I have heard about people commenting, and then we have SBS consultation meetings, and those things all comes up. 
And whenever I go to a, 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 a camp to a, a commu communi uh, community events, people sit next to me on the right hand side, on the left hand side. They are all talk to me about many uh, Melbourne Hero and about the Melbourne Hero residents. How lucky am I? So they have different views. And I read the reports and heard about those comments and I have my own view about those, these issues. We recently declared climate change emergency. One of the things is trees are valuable assets to the community. And I personally feel, I just couldn't express how I feel about the value of the tree. Is, which is determined by human being. And the low value, high value, how could we say that those trees have low values or low values? Or that they because, because of they are at the back of the house, they make it less significant. And they have the economic values, they have the values of social values, and, men, and they, are, they have the econ uh, environmental values, and they are the important access to this community and to the whole Manningham. And talk about, I, I, I can hear about comparison and how good we are in Doncaster. Doncaster is to have those drainage issues that we, are ne we never worry about flooding. But I'm also conscious about the signage in front of the council, council, council building, that the balance of city and country. So I'm conscious that Doncaster, we have the uh, privilege to have the drainage, and we pay the price for having the drainage because we are in the high density population. And they are very different. And I'm conscious about the equitable argument. In a perfect world, we can have that equitable argument. But in, a, in the reality, council just don't have that much money. We, in the end of end, in, uh, in the end of the decision, we had to make tough decision and we had to make the balanced decision. We can't make everybody happy. We just make a very good decision to, exp to abandon the scheme to make people happy that they don't have to pay money for the drainage that required to mitigate the flooding issues. We have abandoned the, uh, the, plan, uh, the, the scheme that I remember in my first year in council and I suppose that that make everybody happy without paying a cent for the assets, including the drainage. So this is a tough decision. If I say for, there are the people at the left hand side that are not happy. If I say against, the people on my right hand side said, Councillor, how could you make that decision? I will never make everybody happy. But this is a conscious, uh, conscious uh, it is a conscious uh, time to make conscious decision. So I support option two with, with the alternative. Yes, yeah. extra. Thank you. E, the point E. Councillor Connor, the right of reply. Thank you. <coughs> what I've heard in the arguments against, I appreciate the thought that's gone into that, but uh, this concept of equity, it depends on where you sit. Everyone actually by human nature, looks after themselves first. When they see inequity, they're usually comparing what they get compared to someone else. So let's, let's have a look at that. In this scheme alone, if you're fighting for equity, if you're saying it should be equitable, would you, you'd be making the argument that every single property in that catchment gets a point of discharge. But they don't, not with this scheme. No, they don't. The rest already have one. Sorry, can I clarify that as a question? Does every single property mm -hmm. within this map, will they get a, a point of full discharge? Uh, three, Mr Mayor, under option one, yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. So the other, out of the 36, okay. But so let's, let's, let's extend the argument further. I apologise, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm happy to be wrong. But let's look at the equity across Manningham. Does every single property in Manningham, do we have a policy to provide Point of discharge to every single property in Manningham is my question. Is there a policy? That's the question. Through you, Mr. De Mr. Chair. Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, we don't have a concrete policy that says we'll provide a 
No. Or to discharge every property throughout Manningham, no. So, so, where, so sh my question to the councillor, should we be making policy here about equity? Because if, you, if you're calling that equitable policy to provide drainage to every single property, then that's a, that's a, we should be talking about that on a Manningham-wide scale. Let's have a discussion. Let's only. let's have a discussion at a some at some other point about that, and we and this can be included there. I'm happy to like consider that, but the equity argument does not does not apply. It's it depends on where you sit. It depends on whether you're in one of those 31 properties or in one of the 89, or in one of the 125 as to whether you consider that equitable, uh, or if you're if you're if you're like all of us who are ratepayers who aren't in any of, in any of those. So the equity argument doesn't doesn't hold water, <coughs> pardon the pun. But uh, and I guess the other question, as as Councillor Chen pointed out, all trees are valuable, and I think we should, we have a responsibility to look after those trees. And I, look, this is to me it's it's pretty obvious that option two achieves the requirements of the scheme, which has been pointed out by the officers, and we should be, we should be um, encouraging the officers to go ahead with that. And, and I'm glad that we've, uh, in terms of the, the last argument, the last argument was around standing by uh, previous decisions. We have to be nimble as a council. We have to be able to take all the facts into consideration and make fresh decisions when we need to. Thank you. Okay. We've heard all the arguments. Uh, can I put uh, uh, this to the motion, uh, to the vote? All those in favour? Against? Okay, the motion Division. is carried. Therefore, there's no... Uh, Division. Sorry? Division. Division. All right. All those in favour, please stand up. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Those you opposed? Say their names. You're going to need to say their names. You've got to call our names out. You've got to call the names? Yeah, yeah, the names. Okay. Your name, and then go around. <laughs> Those uh, in favour? Councillor Galbally, Councillor Kleiner, Councillor Conlon, Councillor Goff, and Councillor Chen. And yourself. And Councillor Zafirov. And those against? Uh, Councillor, oh, Ma Councillor McLeese, Councillor Haynes, and Councillor Pizzinini. Thank you. The, there's no other items, so do I close uh, the business or do I ask the mayor to do it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I close the business.